Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Random Craft. Um, as you guys remember from the last episode, I was a little sick, right? So, uh, this last week, I wasn't feeling like doing any tutorials or any big builds or anything like that. So, as you saw in the time lapse, you know, we were building some chorus fruit farms and some amethyst collection, and I was working my way up to being a bit more productive until we finally got around. To doing the office here which i'm pretty happy how it came out so uh let me just show you guys around right so uh we have the office and you come in right and then we have the desk my little teacup on the uh <laughs> a youtube play button thingy there we got a computer we have some cctv cameras here in the back and the scientific device are nicely tucked away then we have our to-do list and actually to be fair the bedroom, office, and map room is done. We have the map over there. The bedroom will show you guys in a second. Um, and then we are on our way to go and finish the shop upgrade. So I might as well take that one off as well. Uh, there's a few uh, of the old ones still obviously up here. And then there's a few new ones I'll show you guys. I really do need a source of gunpowder because I go through rockets way too quick. And I have an idea. You guys saw the dig that we were doing earlier. Um, and I think I might have an idea of how we can probably get some gunpowder. Um, so furthermore, we have the brain and the, uh, the battery cell up here. So that's good. Let me just clear this so I can have my hand out. Uh, we got the PR goggles, we got the tinfoil hat, and then up there, we have a wonderful little figurine that was made by SPO Gaming. If you guys have seen my community post, you would know, um, about this little thing. It's adorable. And uh, yeah, I decided to have it here in the office, made a little model for it. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Then we have the, the map, we have a little coffee area, we got a bookshelf, and then we have our investigation area. There's still a few things here that I'm not entirely happy with. Um, you know, some things that need to be sorted out. But other than that, let me just show you guys. In here we have uh susan's recharge and just my bed for now i definitely need to decorate this a little bit more but we'll get around to that when we get around to that but i'm just happy that uh, the finally there's at least one room in the lab done i've also kind of finished up this hub area a little bit right there's the stairs in here i think you guys saw that in the last episode but anyway we got the ceiling in now there's room for room there room there um, and a room there, and then we need to do the control um, room in here, right? So let's head on down. As you can see, there's a lot of boxes ready here. I'll show you guys about that in a second. But let's just head down to where we were doing the dig. Now, I need to um, take out one of these platforms, probably one over there or there, um, so that we can put in some kind of lift that's going to be going down into this well, I, I, I'm assuming we're going to turn this into like a mine shaft, right? So I want a lift coming down all the way. And I'm not quite done yet. Still need a little bit to go to get down to uh, uh, 59, I think it is, right? But I have been getting a few diamonds. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll break them down in a second. But once we get to the bottom, I want a lift coming down. And I also want maybe like a spiral pathway coming down here because i do want access to like that cluster over there and i want it to be easy um and accessible right so let's head on back up here and like i said we have some deep slate diamond ore that we should probably break down so let's have a quick little look at how many diamonds we get out of this so that's just under a stack and a half uh i'll take it i uh I can't be stingy with uh, my diamonds at the moment because, like I said in the last episode, I am still very much broke, right? So at least now we got 17 blocks again, which isn't too terrible. It means I can get myself a few more computer screens and I need like keyboards, uh, keypads and stuff for, for some of the doors. So that's good. Let me just show you guys the Amethyst collection. I have been working on this just to make sure that we have better, um, a better means of at least collecting from this big cluster, right? This one's massive. So this is where predominantly the most of our amethyst stocks are going to be coming from, 
so now we can just come in here and I definitely need to turn off the haste beacon before I do this so I don't break any of the uh, the budding amethysts. But yeah, essentially we could come in here and we can grab all of them. And there's some scaffolding to help us get around. And any ones that we don't pick up ourselves will end up yeah, over here um, with some glow ink sacks. Because apparently Mojang has decided that it's a good idea to have uh, glow squids just spawning absolutely everywhere. Regardless of the fact that there's lights in there and there's glass underneath it. And it's not that's not where glow squids are supposed to spawn. The spawning mechanics for glow squids are just completely broken in uh, 118 at the moment. Uh, so yeah, there's glow. There's gonna be glow ink in pretty much every collection system that we have. So as for all of these shulker boxes, we have some amethyst clusters. We have calcite. We have amethyst blocks and tuff and popped chorus fruit. Which now that I think about, oh, I'm gonna take the popped chorus fruit with me so I can actually fill up whatever purple I need. We're also going to be starting to sell end rods. They're going to be pretty expensive. I'm thinking three diamonds a stack. Um, and then some purple here and some blocks for me to actually price everything. We got some clay. See what I mean? Glow squid. Everywhere. Uh, we got clay that we're going to be selling. And then we got a lot of deep slate. And if you think that I'm going to be selling this, you're wrong. I'm going to be giving it away. Because I need people to come to the shop. And I think as a complimentary derp slate at the start is going to be a great way to get people through the door. So while that glow squid is dying over there, yeah, we got a lot of de deep slate or derp slate, as I like to call it. Um, let's take all of these and then let's head over to the perimeter so I can show you guys the chorus fruit farm and then we'll head over to the shopping district and actually stock all of our shops. Enigma's tunnel is freaking amazing. Anyway, He's made a portal over here for the uh, perimeter area. And so there it is for anyone who has been, well, a little bit of rubber banding. For anyone who's been watching since the Atlantia days, you'll recognize the farm design. Um, it's just a tiered system with some water flushing from the corners. And uh, yeah, you just wait for them to grow up. And then down here, I have a little snow guy so that we can collect some snowballs. I actually need, that reminds me, I need to put some um, shovels there for, for getting snowballs. And then you just fly on up here when everything is nice and grown up and you just snowball off some of the, the fruit, um, just over two stacks to be, to be precise, um, because that's how many you need to replant all of this. Um, I thought about building one of those chorus fruit farms, uh, so we can, or the, chorus flower farms to help repopulate this but honestly the snowball thing uh works a treat so there's no real reason and then you just step on those pressure plates and everything flushes down they all collect here there's no collection system they just pick it up and take it with you sort of system right so that's the chorus fruit farm um yeah it i think it has some slime chunks in it but oh well it is what it is now let's head over to the shopping district. Right, I've gone ahead and filled up the shop. So we now have amethyst blocks for one diamond for 32. Uh, amethyst clusters for three diamonds for 16. Because you get quite a lot of uh, shards out of this. Um, and they're, they're still a bit of a pain to get. Even if you have a bunch of amethyst uh, geodes, right? Then calcite, one diamond for 32. Even though you can find them in the mountains now, they're still a bit of a pain to get. Uh, tough one diamond for three stacks. I got plenty of these. And uh, one could say that it would be a tough sell. And then we have clay, one diamond per stack, right? And don't forget, there's complimentary derp slate here. So I'm thinking uh, you grab a shulker if you drop at least a diamond block in the shop. I think that's a good deal. You think that's a good deal? I think that's a good deal. And then over at the end shop, let me just show you guys what I've done there. And yeah, no, I haven't done the path yet. I forgot about it, okay? <laughs> I, I was sick. Uh, anyway, in here, I have now also stocked uh, end rods for three diamonds per stack, which I think is pretty good. The pop chorus is not that hard to get, but... I do still have to buy my blaze rods from Enigma, so that, that that's incorporated into the price. 
And then this has been stocked a little bit. This, uh, I don't think it's going to sell much more than that anyway. So I've just topped up these things a little bit. These ones, I might have to change the price on a little bit. Because three diamonds for two shells with farm is uh, maybe a little bit crazy. So, you know what? Yeah, we're just going to, we're actually just going to do this. We're, we're going to go, um, let's just do this right now. Uh, one diamond for two shells, right? I think it's high time that that price comes down. These things can all still stay the same. And I should probably um, stock some elytras at some point. But that's for another day. And then finally today, I wanted to share something with you guys. This mag, time mag sheen that Magic made. Um, some of you guys might not have been here from the start or have watched a lot of the other uh, randoms. Uh, you might have been following my journey through it all. So uh, let, let me just take you guys on a little trip down history lane, right? So. Let's see what this says. It says, welcome to the time machine, right? The time machine has the power to bring back time from past to the present. Every important event will be preserved by the machine for you to remember and enjoy once again. Every visit is free of charge, but donations are accepted. Diamonds, leather, armor stands, etc. <laughs> Obviously, he needs a lot of armor and armor stands. Uh, we hope you enjoy your visit and come back periodically for updates of the displays. The mag -nage. Okay, now that one's just silly. Um, right, so <clears throat> here we have all of the randoms. For any of the newer viewers who don't know who everyone is, there's me, Nimrel, the Magician, Lag Monster, Enigma. Then we have Shallon, Clear Pixels, who you guys might recognize from the missing posters, uh, Zephyr, um, Archon and Lady Peanut Fish, right? So let's just see. Uh, all right, so the, the the first floor is random starter bases. Okay, cool, cool. So we got Zeph coming down in this little spaceship. That's pretty nice. And uh, then we have Lag, who seems to have made himself some kind of little hobbit hole. Um, and then Enigma with his scientific hobbit hole. It's a bunker. Dude made a bunker. Um, right. <laughs> and then Magic coming. Uh, he's in the in the desert with his little pyramid. And the uh, armor stand book. That's pretty cool. Archon, the bee man. With all his hives and everything. Very nice. And then there's me. Right? With Susan. And we have uh, the tinfoil wagon. Really cool how he managed to squeeze so much detail into this. There's also the Office of the Health and Safety Inspector, if you guys remember that. And then what do we have? We have Clear Pixels with his horsey and his Western um, Western themed base. Then there's Lady Peanut Fish with her ice um, ice fairy thing and the, the Elder Tree or whatever it was called. I can't remember. Um, and then, oh, look, another Hobbit, the Hobbity little hole. With uh, Nimrel and the pink sheep that went missing, I think, at the start, if my uh, if if memory serves. Then we have Shallon coming out of the sea with squid sacks and fish in hand. Very cool. Is there a second floor yet? Let's see. Is there a second floor yet? There indeed is a second floor. All right. So. This, I'm assuming, was the bit where this is the polymorph panic, right? So, Enigma stealing a little bit of Lag's crystal, and then that uh, setting off uh, a chain reaction with Lag trying to punish him by cursing him, turning him into a bunny. <laughs> I'm a very hoppy, right? Um... Then him passing it along to Lady Peanut Fish. Am I nuts? But uh, but I am cursed, right? So he turned her into a peanut, and then she sent that on to Shallon. Something to do with cooking. I can't quite remember. Time to spice things up. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then he passed it along to Magic, if I'm not mistaken. No, to Nimr. No, Magic. Right, turn magic into Gerald. 
and something about having to trade an emerald for a block of diamond or something like that. And then he actually managed to sell that to Nimrel because she really likes legends. And uh, then she got cursed and had to uh, protect her precious. Right? And then she moved it along to um, Zeph. But I think Enigma got a hold of that and then passed it along to Lag, uh, turning him into Lag Arena. And then that was the end of the Polymorph. So I think that's that. I don't think there's a third floor yet. Let me just see here. Uh, no, I think Magic is working on the third floor. So we'll leave that. And that is going to be it. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, do leave me a like. I know it's a little bit short, but I am still just just recovered from my from my illness. So uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Have a fantastic day and see you. At some point, I should get around to actually playing some of these mini games. It's not safe around here, though.